All right. Ugh. Let's get our game up on the board. <laughs> Eventually. There we go. And let's make some friends. <laughs> All right. Time we got through volume six. Up on volume seven. We might have time for two or three, depending on what happens today. So. Ever since you were a kid back on Earth, you have always held the deep, close wish to one day travel the world. You wanted to see new places, experience exciting new tastes, and altitudes and temperatures. Maybe go scuba diving. Who never imagined you would actually get the chance? That kind of cool stuff didn't happen to someone like you. Well, you're finally getting your wish. It's just a totally different world. Funny how life turns out. When you get back to Earth, well, you don't want to think about that. Who knows if it will ever even happen. You've really chilled out recently, found your place in the universe. Drifting from friend to friend, adventure to adventure. It's the only way to live. All right. Remily Coniel. Omar. All right. You've wandered into a part of town that seems to have some culture going on. There are a lot of bright neon lights, and you can't read what the signs say, but you can see arcades, a performance space, and what looks like a movie theater, perhaps more indie-oriented compared to the mall cinemas you've seen before. As you continue wandering, you come across a trendy-looking building with a placard outside that shows a little cartoon doodle of a fancy waiter holding out trays of snacks. You can't read what the words say, but you recognize the intergalactic signal for free food inside, come on in. You head inside, and it appears to be an art gallery. It must be opening tonight, because there are festive decorations up, and a little table offering drinks and hors d'oeuvres. There are many other art appreciators here, and your adrenaline spikes when you realize that most of the trolls milling around are purple bloods. You're not sure if some paintings and snacks are worth the high chances of being maimed when chaotic violence breaks out, but as you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury, someone approaches you. You don't look like my other patrons. Are you lost? Or are you perhaps looking to start collecting? If you're loaded, ignore that first question. Art is for everyone, after all, regardless of your blood color. The four black pupils in her eye glint and sparkle, and you're not sure yet if it's a menacing or friendly sparkle. She grins at you, and it shows all her teeth. So what do you think? The art? Have any paintings caught your eye? You look around. You don't know much about art, but you are a nerd, and a lot of the paintings in here remind you of scenes from popular movies and games back home. <laughs> yes, you always want to be dismissive of the art, because there's always horrible things you can say. <laughs> Seems kind of derivative. <sighs> Clear, you clearly know nothing about art, Pleb. Pleb. If you don't like it, there's the door. Make room for someone with money to burn and better taste. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Fine. Don't know art. I don't even know what I like. <laughs> well. I know what I like. It doesn't go on the family-friendly pages. All right, come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. Friend to friend. Yeah, the artwork is stunning. Perhaps the best I've ever seen. Troll Mona Lisa who? <laughs> Stop, you flatterer. She puts a hand on her hip and winks at you, and you're guessing here that she doesn't actually want you to stop. You're also making the connection that she must be the artist who painted all of these. You sense an opportunity for friendship, so you lay it on thick and gush about how talented she is. Oh, I thought you looked like a dumbass when you walked in, but you have good taste after all. Let me show you around. You follow Remini through the gallery, 
swinging by the table with the free food first. It's pretty good by the standards you've come to expect on Alternia, but what you thought was wine at first glance is actually Fago. No thanks. <laughs> you may have noticed some themes in my exhibited work. I don't love clowns or gore as much as it may seem. That's just what I have for sale here. If you look at my work online, you'll see more of the full range of my art. But for this fancy gallery shape, Purple Bloods are some of my best customers. Those clowns fucking love art. They're rich as fuck and they'll buy anything as long as it's violent enough or features enough religious themes. You've seen the kind of destruction and mayhem that Purple Bloods are capable of, so you're surprised that she doesn't seem to mind being in a crowded gallery with so many of them. Most of the trolls you've interacted with have done their best to steer clear of the clown murder cult guys, at least when one of those hate-romance relationships isn't on the table. Isn't it kind of dangerous to actively court them for our audience? Oh sure, they can be unpredictable, and keeping them happy requires some schmoozing. Occasionally I have to pretend like I've drunk the Fago and pull some religious references out my ass. But there's nothing I can't handle. You can make a lot more money as an artist if you're not choosy about what you draw. One of my customers is this blue blood moron who only ever commissions me to draw low bloods in quadrants with other low bloods. I got him convinced that giving a deal on his rate when he's actually paying five times what I charge anyone else. <laughs> my point is, artistic integrity is for chumps. If you want to get ahead in this world, give the people what they want first. That strikes you as a depressing outlook on the creative process. But you're aware by now that idealism in Alternia tends to lead to shorter lifespans. And you have to admit, looking around at the crowd in this gallery, that her cynical approach seems to be working. You tell her that she sounds pretty business savvy in addition to talented, and she winks at you again. Thanks, I know. Because I make bank doing shit like this, I'm able to fund my passion projects. You should really check out my webcomic. But before you can find out what her webcomic is about, she notices another troll that has been sidling up to you. As she approaches, she whips out what looks like a small recording device with a smile. Remily's face goes carefully blank, and she crosses her arms over her chest. And how can I help you? You know. <laughs> ah, yes. Hello there, Ms. Nemak. I'm with Alternia Knightley, and I must say, it looks like your first ever gallery exhibit has been a smashing success so far. The journalist's syrupy tones and innocuous words don't seem threatening to you. But you're picking up on some tense vibes from Remley, whose hair ribbon swims forward in front of her face aggressively. Of course it's a success. I never expected otherwise. Mm-hmm. Maybe not, but in some in the art world have expressed surprise at the timing of this. Some have called it bold, considering that you're currently in the middle of a plagiarism controversy. Would you care to comment on the case against you by Trident Media? Instead of being caught off guard by the question sprung on her, Remley relaxes and laughs. Well, it's not Vriska. <laughs> Everyone is not Vriska. Except Vriska, who's too Vriska. <laughs> oh, that! <laughs> As if they have any kind of real evidence that I'm violating their precious intellectual property. All the characters I draw and profit from are entirely original, and Trident Media and their alleged lacerator are just mad about it, because the whole internet knows that my storylines are better than the sto source material. Oops. I mean, better than the unrelated creative works that my comics happen to bear a superficial resemblance to. Feel free to quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, we had fun with Elward last time. The reporter takes a quote and scuttles away. Remley seems unbothered, but you can't help but feel concerned for her. Copyright infringement is serious business. Is your new friend in legal hot water? No. Alternia barely has any copyright protections to speak of. It's just that little pest Gordiak trying to stir up shit as usual. The company behind his lawsuit wouldn't even care if he hadn't gotten involved. It's no big deal. Nothing I can't handle. You go back to following her around the gallery, keeping your distance whenever a purple blood comes up to compliment her on her work. You can tell that despite her confident attitude, Remley is still thinking about that journalist. She taps her foot and frowns at the paintings whenever there's a lull in conversation, throwing glances at the door that the journalist left through. You know, it's not like Altonia has a free press or credible newspapers. That reporter was probably hired by someone with a grudge to dig up dirt on me. I don't think it was Gordier, actually. Too obvious. Amateurish. No, this stinks of my competition. 
the artistic establishment that thinks all I do is fan art and shouldn't be taken seriously as an artist. All of their paintings are in the museum across the street, and they hate that I've managed to put up my own exhibit. Those stuck-up pretentious bulge scrubs have been trying to sabotage me for so long. She turns to you, her hands balled up into fists, and the X in her eye flashing with passion. I've been waiting for the opportunity to strike back at them. If everyone is going to accuse me of being a thief and a hack anyway, I might as well steal from them for real. But their security is tight, and I haven't had an accomplice. Until now. What do you say? Want to help me pull off a risky art heist? <laughs> yes. Fuck yes. And hell fucking yes. Remily does one last round in her exhibit, saying goodbye to her patrons and grabbing her bag, which seems to be mostly art supplies, as you head out the door and onto the street. The museum that she wants to rob is at the end of the block, in a much bigger, fancier building than the one you just walked out of. All the lights are off inside, and it doesn't have any signs advertising current exhibits. Hmm. We can do this one of two ways. Follow that journalist and steal the keys if she has them, or break in without them. Okay. Uh, let's try and steal the key. <laughs> you would much rather walk through an unlocked door than try to bust it down, and the reporter is still in sight, turning a corner down the street. You try to emulate Remley's casual yet confident way of walking, like she could blend in anywhere and pull off anything. <laughs> but despite your efforts to not attract suspicion, you keep getting looks. Not being the same species as everyone around you tends to make you stand out. Shit, this could be a problem. I can put together a disguise for you. Hang on. You watch as she starts pulling things from her bag. She seems to have all sorts of things in there, from paint blushes to blobs of clay to paint, and you think she might be putting together some fake horns for you from scratch real quick? But before she can finish, you realize that one of the purple bloods about to walk into Remley's gallery is staring at you. He looks vaguely familiar, and you realize a little too late where you've met before when he starts walking towards you. You. I remember you. You broke into my apartment. It's the same troll that you and Polypa escaped from. You back away as he advances, a lazy grin on his face. Remley gl glances from him to you and back to him again. Well, fuck. Looks like I'm not going to have an accomplice after all. Hi, pal. She hoists her bag over her shoulder and shrugs her hands in a what-can-you-do gesture. Then she's gone. The big purple blood playing her no mind as she absconds. You want to feel betrayed, but it's hard to blame her considering how scary this guy is. In your heart, you know that you're dead already, but you're not going to accept your fate without attempting to prevent it. You make a mad dash to escape, sprinting towards a skinny alleyway and thinking that maybe you can scamper up a fire escape or something. Unfortunately, your attacker's size doesn't seem to slow him down, and you can hear his heavy footballs right behind you. Footfalls. He laughs, and it somehow sounds dopey and dumb and completely terrifying at the same time. You make it to the alley, but you fucked up because it's a dead end, and you don't see anything you could use to clamber to high enough ground. You turn to face him, hopelessness sinking down to your toes. Your scrappy alien tenure on this hazardous new planet is about to come to a messy end. The purple blood swings his massive club lazily in one hand as he approaches you, not bothering to run anymore. You drop into a fighting crouch, trying to think back to your third grade karate lessons for any moves that might be useful, but before he can crush your skull in, you see a flash of movement behind him. He staggers, dropping the club as something hits him from behind. <laughs> as much as I appreciate inf inspiring my fans, I'm going to have to ask you not to interpret my art so literally, as in no murdering. Remley springs off the troll's back after clawing him and rolls to the side, avoiding his swinging fist. She grabs for his club, which is almost as long as she is tall, but before she can use it, his next blow catches her below the ribcage, sending her flying across the alley and into the brick wall. She's on her feet again fast, but you can tell that she's injured, and now she doesn't have the element of surprise on her side. The purple blood turns his back on you as he closes in on Remley, laughing again. You can't let him kill her, not when she came back for you, but you have no idea how you can help you. Your eyes land on Rumley's bag, tossed to the side in the melee, and in desperation you grab a loose paintbrush that rolled out of it. 
You dive forward with a battle cry and stab the end of the paintbrush deep into the high blood's calf. Violet blood squirts you in the face. He yells and you manage to roll away just in time to avoid getting smacked. The slight stab wound hasn't slowed him down much, but it's given Remley a chance to dive out of his range, and while he's still trying to grab you, she gets a hold of his club again. <laughs> wow. She's stronger than she looks, strong enough to get a good wind-up with that thing, and when he turns toward her, she brings it down hard on his skull. Wow. It takes a few more good smashes before the troll finally stops groaning and twitching. Remley breathes heavily, wiping blood spatter off her forehead. She looks up, meeting your eyes. You are absolutely positive that this is the most dramatic way that you've ever been rescued. You can't believe she came back and risked her life for you. <laughs> don't mention it. I needed an accomplice, right? <laughs> she drops the club and staggers over to you, pausing to spit out cerulean blood. You remember that she took some damage and hurry to support her, offering your weak human arm to lean on. Is she going to be okay? I'll be fine. Ceruleans are tough to call, even for a wannabe subjugulator. She tilts her head, looking down at the way her blood swirls with the larger quantities of purple blood pooling on the asphalt. Huh. That's actually not bad as an artistic medium. The colors and textures work well together. Maybe that blue blood kid from Cheetah is onto something. Anyway, thanks for having my back with that paintbrush. That took some quick thinking. We make an okay team. I've never killed anyone before, but that kind of ruled, didn't it? <laughs> you're not sure that you would choose those exact words, but you're pretty relieved right now. You might not have the bloodthirsty glint in your eyes that Remley does, but maybe you can interpret your adrenaline shakes as euphoric overload or something. Hell yeah, me too. I can see why people get into this killing business. If I wasn't such a great artiste, I'd consider switching careers. But sometimes when you're good at too many things, you have to pick one and stick to it. So no professional assassinations for me. I'm still determined to rob the shit out of my competitors though. And you, now that we've killed someone together, it just makes sense for us to stay partners in crime, right? <laughs> Your heart leaps at the implication that she wants to stick together. You truly do not mind breaking every law in the books if it means she'll be your friend. Nice. We probably don't need to go around breaking every law, I just want to steal some art. But maybe we can reschedule the heist for another day. This neighborhood will be crawling with drones as soon as they realize a high blood was killed. You feel bl bad at this troll attempting to slaughter your ruined Remley's gallery opening. Oh, are you kidding? My customer base loves this kind of shit. My art will get even more of a violent reputation when word gets out that someone died at my first gallery show. That's metal as fuck. You limp out of the alley, supporting Remley with your arm around her waist, and she directs you to the back entrance of her gallery, where the two of you can clean off the blood and hide until the drones and the crowds are gone. If you don't mind, you can lie low at my place for a few days while we plan this heist. And I might as well get some work done while we wait and scheme. That fight was pretty inspiring. You're already my accomplice, so how would you feel about also being... my muse? <laughs> Victory! More blood! <laughs> Alright. See what happens if we, uh... just bust right in. Hmm... Friend to friend. <laughs> okay. It's stunning. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bust down that door. Sorry, Emily claspected me as a muse. I can no longer be anything else. Oh no. <laughs> A heist sounds risky enough without spending extra time trying to pick pockets and keys. You suggest that if this crime is going to happen tonight, it should happen now. No time like the present. Good point. Let's go break into a museum. You scoot casually across the street to the museum on the corner. After seeing the kind of looks your unusual appearance draws from passers-by, Remley takes some fabric from her bag and wraps it around your head. Yeah, now people will probably just assume that you have horns. 
You're just embarrassed by them being tiny or malformed. Back into that alcove, shielding the museum's back door, and wait for me. I'm gonna circle the block first, just so we seem less suspicious. As you wait for Rumley by the door, the reality of his caper settles in. You've been excited about the heist at first, because who wouldn't be excited by the opportunity to sneak around, steal some art, and stick it to the man, probably while a snazzy soundtrack played? But now you realize that in heist movies, they always have blueprints for the place they're gonna rob, and you have no blueprints. It seems like a dire sign. Before you can get too swept up in your worries, Remily returns. Does she have any idea how to get into this place? Because the door looks pretty unbustdownable to you. Now, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. I've never done this before, but it'll probably work. She roots through her bag until she comes out with several paintbrushes of varying size, then crouches down and uses the skinniest one as a lockpick. It doesn't work, but then she selects a different paintbrush, with different bristles, and uses some of the bristles bunched together, and the lock clinks open. Ha! I'm great at this, but I could be an incredible thief if I decided to do that instead of art. Do you ever take the time to just sit back and acknowledge how great you are at everything you try to do, and how much you trust yourself to never fuck up when it counts? You hope the question's rhetorical, because your honest answer is that no, you don't have a whole lot of experience acknowledging how great you are at everything you attempt. Their mental acknowledgments lately have mostly been the opposite of that. Maybe it wasn't rhetorical, because Remley stays crouched down like that for a second, looking at you like she wants an answer. When you eventually come up with an awkward shrug, she stands up and puts away her makeshift lockpick, dusting off her hands and opening the door. I guess not everyone can be at my confidence level. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> you follow her inside. Much to your delight, you see that this museum has an infrared laser beam alarm system. It looks so cool, just like in the movies. And you're back to being excited. Remley seems into it too, bouncing on the balls of her feet next to you. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. One of us is going to have to get through these beams to disable the alarm. The box to do it is across the room there, see? But these lasers are so close together. You can see the issue. Emily isn't that tall for a troll, but she might be too tall to maneuver through these beams. Even if she bends over, it's going to be tricky for her to squirm through them all without losing her balance and tripping the alarm. But the trolls that designed this alarm system didn't have your homeless ass in mind when they thought of potential intruders. You stoop over a bit to see if you'll fit, and sure enough, yes, you should be able to shimmy your way through these beams with minimal contortion. Fuck yeah! I knew I was right to bring an accomplice! Create great thinking, me. And great heist skills, you, if you pull this off. You recall what she said about confidence and trusting yourself to not fuck things up, and assure her that you've got this. You face the laser beams with your self-doubt shoved all the way down, where it hopefully won't screw anything up for you. You take a deep breath and crouch down and carefully, so carefully, inch your way forward between the wires. It's the slowest you've ever crossed a room in your life, and there are a couple of moments when you teeter and almost lose your balance. You can hear Remley hissing through her teeth behind you at tense moments, but you press on without looking back. And then you've done it. You've reached the box to disable the alarm system. And you have no idea how you're going to do that. All the buttons are labeled in an alien alphabet. Crap. Oh, that's right. I forgot you can't read. Press the one that looks like uh, a meat hook, but with angry eyes. And then press the one that looks like a meat hook, but it's got Purby's claws. That should do it. That sounds bonkers to you, but you look back at the buttons. And her descriptions of the letters were actually pretty spot on. You press the angry eyes and the cat claws, and the whole arm system makes a soft shuddering noise and clicks and shuts off. You're thrilled. You did it. Who knew that doing something right could give you such a rush? This is just like the part of the heist where the heroes had to sweat for a minute, but then defeated the unforeseen wrench in their plan. We're certain that there couldn't possibly be any larger wrenches in your plan still to come. <laughs> Rumley crosses the room to join you, giving you an appraising look with her hands on her hips. Not bad. Thanks for coming through for me like that. Now let's get what we came here for. There's one work in particular that I'm here to get. You follow her through the different galleries, passing through sculpture rooms and oil paintings, until you reach a display of pieces that look inspired by pop culture. The paintings and prints here uh, remind you a lot of Remley's exhibit, 
and when you look at her, you can see that she's rigid, her eyes flashing and a passionate blue tint to her cheeks. Can't believe they call me the hack. Such bullshit. Whatever, it's cool. It doesn't actually bother me, I just need to send the message that they don't want to fuck with me. This painting right here is a direct ripoff of one of my early works. Back when I was naive enough to put my art up for free, without realizing it would just get copied and someone else would get all the credit and the profit. Well, I learned my lesson. I'll take this so they can't sell it, rip off their rip off, make something even better, and turn it over for a truckload of cash. She grabs the painting, and just when the two of you are ready to heist roll out of there, you hear voices at the back door and what sounds like a team of security guards coming in. They must have arrived to investigate the alarm system shutting down. You're ready to embrace your panic, but you stop hyperventilating when you feel Remley's vice-like cl clawed grip on your arm. Don't freak out. Follow my lead and we can still get out of this. You assume that the whole heist is off now that security has shown up, but to your surprise, Remley doesn't put the stolen painting back on the wall. She gives your arm one last reassuring squeeze before sauntering out of the room with her head held high, moseying with no hurry towards the front door. You follow her nonchalant lead as best you can. When one of the security guards stops her, Remley gives him a condescending, slightly confused look. Uh, what are you even doing here? My assistant told me she informed all staff that I would be swinging by today to pick this up. Did you miss that memo? Give me a break. I'm sure it must be easy to miss things, right? Because as a security guard, you probably get so much important correspondence every day. Her four pupils somehow give her sneering eye roll extra sarcastic force. She yawns, and with her free hand not holding the painting, flicks some non-existent dirt off her shirt. The security troll, a burgundy blood judging from the sign on his cop hat, looks uncertain and embarrassed. But I get it. I understand crossed wires. Since you're apparently too busy to do your job right, I'll catch you up to speed. I'm the artist behind this piece, and I've got a wealthy patron interested in commissioning something similar. I'm taking this as a reference in order to negotiate a better deal. There is absolutely no way these guys will buy her story. The two of you look so guilty, and you still have her yellow sash wrapped around your head, probably looking like an idiot with a head injury. But Remley is staring down this guard like it hasn't even occurred to her that she might be questioned. You've never seen someone double down so hard on a story that is such transparent bullshit. If you want to waste more of my time and yours by calling your superior to verify, go ahead. You may not be thrilled that this mix-up happened, because you can't keep up with your emails, though. The security troll was already wavering, and at the mention of his emails, he cringes. His co-workers behind him shuffle around, muttering to each other. He steps back, horns lowered in embarrassment, and waves you and Remley through with a mumbled apology. You can't believe this is happening, but the two of you swagger out to the street through the front door, legitimate as ever anything. You don't stop until you've turned the corner to the next block, and then Remley leans against a wall and laughs, holding her painting happily to her chest. <laughs> Suckers. Feels good to get away with things, doesn't it? It does feel good, you suppose. Mostly you think you're still reeling. How did she come up with a story like that on the fly? How does she guess correctly? that the security guard wasn't some hyper-organized Inbox Zero kind of guy who'd never believe that he could have missed a message. Rumley gives you an odd look and reaches forward to unwind her sash from around your head and stuff it in her bag. I just winged it, man. You overthink things. My guesses are usually right because I'm a creative genius. But if going after him for emails hadn't worked, meh. I guess we'd have been arrested and then I'd talk my way out of that eventually, too. Wow. You find it hard to believe that she goes through life so easily, with that kind of unshakable belief that she can improvise through anything. Doesn't she worry that it'll catch up with her someday? You want the long answer? It's this. Nope, I super don't. And if you still don't get it, I don't know if it's the kind of thing you can really learn. She picks up the painting again, looking down the street and away from you. Well, that was a successful heist. Now that I've ruined the competition, I feel inspired. I'm going to take this home and paint. Wait, hang on. With a sinking feeling, you realize that she's getting ready to depart and that this friendship might be slipping through your fingers. Sorry, kid, you seem like you're not totally useless, at least, but I'm not one for long-term artistic collaboration. It's a lot easier to talk your way out of tight spots when you're on your own. Peace? <laughs> you watch her go, your shoulders sagging with disappointment. You guys stole from a museum together, escaped together, bamboozled the cops together, 
You should have bonded over your shared transgressions and culpability. Every crime movie you've ever seen has taught you that heists bring people closer together. But, cultural differences? <laughs> Game over. <laughs> oh, boy.